kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome to a breaking news episode of Star Wars in Review. It's the show that dares to ask, how in the world Han Solo got the Falcon so dirty in such a small amount of time? Over here, I'm Maya Madrid, and over there is my better podcasting half, Luke Neitzel. Hi. Luke Neitzel, it's Han Solo trailer time. In the past 24 hours, there have been two trailers, the teaser to the, tre- the, teaser, to the teaser and the real deal teaser. Before we get into specifics, our audience knows you have been less than enthused about this movie. Do these trailers make you more or less interested in seeing Sto- Solo, a Star Wars story? Probably about the same to slightly less, just because it looks competent. And I was hoping for it to be just a massive train wreck of a disaster. That would be more fun to see. That's kind of where I was going. So we, we didn't get a ton out of this. What would you imagine that my reaction to this is? I just want to know, as well as you know me, what do you think I thought about all this? I think you got nostalgic glee and got all excited. Well, we better talk about it. I think you're right on. Um, so, first of all, I, I love this trailer. The I want to talk about the teaser on the Super Bowl. Were you watching as the Super Bowl was happening? How did you come across it? I did. Uh, they had to call me in, so I missed the opening 10 seconds because I was I was making fajitas in the other room. But I, I came in in time for the Star Destroyer emerging from the lightning storm or whatever that was, which is a fantastic shot. So that's that's when I walked into it, and then I, I've seen it again since a few times in prep. But I I, I saw it right right when it, it hit at the Super Bowl for the most part. All right, what uh, what sorts of things did you dig about? What did you not do? What was the, that first teaser trailer? What was your original reaction? So I liked this one better than the longer trailer. I love envisioning the big, bad, horrible galactic empire sending out recruiting guys to try and get you to enroll it it reminded me of my my brother joined the national guard when he was 17 and my parents are hippies who hate the military and they were super pissed and he ended up having to have this recruiter come over all the time constantly giving speeches who was just the super peppy his name was kip kip carlson teenage recruiter coming in and talking about how great the military is and how your whole life is going to be set up or and whatnot. So I love the image of the Empire having to, to do that on shithole planets, begging <laughs> begging teenagers to, to join so they can get their college flight school education paid for. So that was what jumped out at me. I like that a lot. Uh, there are some, some other good shots. I mentioned the Star Destroyer coming out of there. I've always said that my reason for wanting to see this movie the most in all seriousness, is Donald Glover, and that intro shot of Donald Glover is amazing as Lando. And then to top it off, I really liked the shot of Chewbacca putting his arm around Han. It gave me feels. Oh, you do have a soul. For me, um, this is probably not surprising, and I don't want to ruin anything for you since you're not as well-equipped to talk about the Expanded Universe, um, but it does borrow a lot from the Expanded Universe, the story about Han Solo. And so because the new star wars stuff has been so apprehensive about embracing a lot of that it was shocking to me and being like no this is what this is the story of han solo holy crap he's here and he's doing this and this and it was it was unbelievable i don't know if you noticed tag and bank or i think that was tag and bank was the no. recruiting guy that was the the rumor and that was uh, oh that'd be awesome a shout out and then the uh the race car thing reminded me of pod racing oh i thought I about know. that too. did you think about that yeah which doesn't bring back good memories So everybody's been talking about how awesome Lando is. He has no lines. And Solo has one line, and everybody is kind of crapping on him. And that kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. Because I think so many people are so excited to see uh, Glover as Lando. But nobody's giving the chance to to Aaron Reich. And as a teaser trailer, I think people were saying, oh, they're they're hiding him for a reason. And I I felt that was kind of unfair. Well, I don't think you can compare the resume of Donald Glover versus the resume of Alden Eichenreich. I mean, it's not. His name is Aaron Reich, but whatever. Either way, but it, they're not remotely comparable. No, but it's not like Mr. Glover is is Tom Hanks or or. I'm not saying he's bad. I really okay. really like him, but like, but like, let's just settle down here. Okay, no, no, let's and, let's compare the two. So you have Donald Glover, writer on Thirty Rock, five seasons on Community, in multiple movies, including you know Best Picture nominees like The Martian little role in spider-man and i mean come on atlanta i mean that's probably the most prestigious show 
that or the Handmaid's Tale of the last year. And, and he's the the writer, the producer, People director. People were excited for Lando long before Atlanta did anything. No, so. but oh, but still, you're talking about the reaction on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, you know, this is a guy who is won Emmys for acting, Golden Globes for acting, the first African American director to win an Emmy, the the you know one one writing Emmys and Golden Globes. Alden Ehrenreich or Ehrenreich is. The guy in that Coen Brothers movie that barely anyone saw. They are not comparable people. I'm just saying, I'm not saying there's anything bad with Glover. I love Glover. I want it, I want him to be awesome, and I think he's going to do a great job. I just think it's funny that you have no lines out of one guy and one line of another guy, and everybody craps on one and not the other. Well, the, that's the rumor hasn't been that they had to fire the director and reshoot the movie because Glover can't act. Well, Whether that's, that's fair or not, that hasn't been the rumor. What did you think of the look of like the planets and the feel, the dark feel? It was very much like uh, Rogue One. Um, That's sort of like, I don't know, dirty. Yeah, it was dirty and dusty. I'm assuming where we see the the Falcon is, is Kessel with the mining dust and, and whatnot around it. And it, it was it was very dark, the color palette they chose. Um, and they had some contrasts as well. Um, it's fine. It feels like episodes four through, you know, nine or four through eight, whatever we're up to Rogue One. It felt like that, that style. It wasn't the glossy prequels thing that turns a lot of people off. So I thought the look was fine. I don't think, I think I got a lot of that nostalgia out of me in Rogue One for seeing the aesthetic completely back. So this didn't strike me the first way the Rogue One trailer did. Because everything in that, I was going, oh, that's just like this, that's just like this, that's just like this. So I think a little of that wore off, and that's not Solo's fault. It's just, I've seen it, and I know they can do it now. All right, let's talk about the trailer that you liked a little bit less. The real Kit and Caboodle, or at least the more Kit and Caboodle, that next day on uh, Good Morning America, the teaser trailer, the official teaser trailer, I guess, uh, comes out minute and a half about. Um, what were your thoughts on that? It's fine. My problem with this movie, and I haven't tried to read articles about plot synopsises or things like that, but what I gleam from the plot on this one seems to be really, really formulaic story that we've seen before. He's going to wash out because he's too rebellious of the Empire. You know, meet up with a bunch of ragtag smugglers, one of whom's going to be a mysterious woman from his past that he's been with before, Um, and they're going to have some romp, and Woody Harrelson will probably betray him or something as the, the gruff leader, and you know, he'll he'll set out on his path. So I'm hoping that that's not true, that there's a little more to it than that. But it, it looked very breezy to me. A movie you'll you'll go see and probably have a good time, but you'll forget about shortly after. Yeah, basically, like, what are what is really important to me, more than plot and more than changes in plot and twists in plot, is characters and character development. And I think one of the things that I really liked about this trailer is it got Han Solo right to me. Now, is it exactly like Harrison Ford? No, it's not. And I think if people are, are looking for Harrison Ford, they're going to be disappointed. It's, it's very similar to when, you know, when professor Xavier is recast as, uh, as a younger pr- professor Xavier and getting the feel right and getting those beats right on the character, but also the new actor like James McAvoy putting his own spin on it. And I looked at that characters like Superman or Batman that have been recast. And that's sort of my threshold of what I'm going to find acceptable. And I, you know, it's early days, but seeing this trailer, I was like, that is Han Solo. Is it Harrison Ford? No, it doesn't sound like him. But it is 10 years before A New Hope. But at the same time, I think it feels right to me. I was fine with everything that, that he did and hit the very brief things did. And it's not that I want surprise twists. I don't at all, to be honest. I just want to see... I don't want to see a story I've seen 70 times repackaged in a Star Wars outfit. I want to see them do something that's a little different. And that's my worry about this movie with the director changes and the little bits we've seen, that it's going to be kind of a basic bones formulaic story, but set in the, the Star Wars how, world. How do you like Star Wars? I mean, every Star Wars episode that we've seen is essentially based on Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. So like, how do you like Star Wars and then complain or that you don't want to see something formulaic? We've been through 
I mean, how many of these movies where there's the you know the basic cycle that the that the characters go through? There's always going to be things that are the same. Yes, there's always going to be the hero's journey. You're always going to be fi- able to find comparables between these movies in and of themselves and other movies that they are borrowing from and repurposing. And I just am really worried that this is going to have nothing of its own to bring to the table, and that's not what I want. I want to see things that are different. So I'm I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping this is some great characterizations that I can get really into, and I'm hoping there's some fun stuff that goes. And who knows? I mean, The Last Jedi was a heavy movie. Maybe what Star Wars needs right now is something that's just kind of more of a fun romp. Well, I think after Rogue One and and Last Jedi, you're probably right. I mean, that's one of the reasons that I like Force Awakens, is it was fun. And hopefully that this, you know, hits the same beats. Talking about how the way it's shot, we talked about the dark and dingy tone. That's something that's carried on in this. The, there's the dark palette i really like that singer who's like kind of like oh, yeah. singing and dancing i just the the way that her dress sort of moves i thought was awesome well this is something i thought of while watching that sequence is that not that i'm defending canto biter saying i want to see more but this seems more like the movie you would have a scene in a casino space casino in this would have been more appropriate and fit yeah. it more so that, that would be fun it, it's also a good place i think for some some callbacks like this is another place where a cantina scene would make sense even though i don't want every single movie to have a a cantina scene well there was images of that they've got him standing in front of a group of people or just the speculation is of course that's going to be the sabak table uh where he wins the millennium falcon what are your thoughts on the millennium falcon the different look the the nice the neat the, the lando it the, the first time i saw when they they show the the bright white of the falcon it took me a minute to i had to think out in my head i was like that is the falcon right am i remembering another ship in my head and i was like no it's just really clean i think that's a fun little thing to throw in it would be dingy and aged over time and i think han would be the type of guy as a smuggler who would intentionally dirty his ship up to make it look like a piece of garbage so he could then outrun people and fool them and and be less conspicuous when he's he's smuggling. So I, th- I think that's interesting. I'm not sure why he was driving it all the time, because it's Lando's ship, which he made very clear in Empire Strikes Back. So I, I'm excited to see how some of that stuff plays plays out, how they're able to handle that and incorporate it, and what it looks like when you physically see it instead of envisioning it in your head. One thing I, I noticed, and I haven't seen it mentioned, but there's, there's the part where Lando is flying the ship and the droid's on the other side, and they both give like the salute mm-hmm. at the same time, and then they hit the hyperspace at the same time. And if you watch that, I just watched Return of the Jedi today, and it's the same salute that Lando gives when he's saying goodbye to Han when Han's getting on the shuttle oh. to Tigerium. Not a lot of people have said that, or I haven't seen anybody say that, but I noticed that uh, today, and I think that was like a call out to that, and I just thought that was perfect. So Yeah, that's um, fun. What would you think of the music? I really like it at the beginning. When they're flipping switches, and the music kind of fades into the switches, and it's kind of a, a drum beat. It, it sounded fine. We'll have to see. I didn't have a problem with the music in Rogue One in the trailers. And then, especially at the start of Rogue One, I think it it's too much what they went for there. And then as the movie went on, I, I eased into it a little bit more. So I, I'm optimistic. I, I, this one is... Is this one John Williams? Or is this... No, some... he, he does Han Solo's theme. Okay. But uh, the score is, is somebody else. I forget the, the gentleman's name at this point. Okay. John Powell? I want to say it's Powell. I could be wrong. Flame me if I'm wrong, but... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I thought it was fine. I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't jumping out of my seat for it. I did catch the bit at the beginning that I really liked, but uh, no no problems with it. We've talked in the past, and that's something my opinion has sort of changed on. I've been very critical of Rogue One and the music to it. Uh, but, but going back, the last time that I, I watched it, I paid really special attention to the music. And it's really only that first third of the movie that i really despise and then i feel like the music gets better in the second and third act i agree uh final thoughts on you know what you're expecting from this movie i just want to go have a a fun time that's all i'm expecting really from it i'm not expecting this to rank in the top star wars movies with everything that happened with the chaos behind the scenes but then again rogue one had chaos behind the scenes and that's one of my favorite I just want to go in and not walk out disappointed. Just go in, have a good time, even if it's not one to remember. I just want to enjoy it for the two hours I'm there. I just think if Ron Howard can save this thing, there's going to be a legion of nerds who worship him forever. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for, that this is all gets saved. But I you know, I started reading old Han Solo novels and comics. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting really excited here. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Kids Seriously. This episode was recorded and produced at Camrose Studios. 
visit our website at www.kidsseriously.wordpress.com or email us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Kids Seriously. Until next time.